Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric, thank you so much for tuning in and welcome to your weekly twin flame check-in, reading, update, <clears throat> whatever you wanna call it, yeah? So this is a weekly reading for the Twin Flame Collective. All right, now, if you're new to my channel, very, very welcome to you guys, happy to see you. Um, but if you're new to my channel, um, then I need to tell you a little bit about the readings that I do here for the Twin Flame Collective. I, you, so I do a mirror reading here and I'm looking into the energies of the Divine Masculine and the, and the Divine Feminine. Now, the focus of this reading is to see what's going on with the balance between masculine and feminine energies within primarily. This does mean that you will be able to get some sort of information as to what's going on with your uh, Divine counterpart in the physical realm. However, um, number one, this is a general reading, so not everything is going to resonate, so take what resonates and leave what doesn't. But number two, the way to union, whether it be with the person you have in mind or someone that is completely new or different to who you think is your divine counterpart, regardless of who they are, the way to union is through union with the self first, okay? So that is why I, my primary focus with the readings that I do here for the Twin Flame Collective are on what's going on with the masculine and feminine energies within you, all right? So regardless of which side you resonate with, whether you're on the feminine or the masculine side, look at the opposite side of this reading and work to see how you can relate to the information that's coming through with the cards, how you can relate to that to the inner divine masculine or inner divine feminine within you, okay? Um, again, this is a general reading, so everything is not going to resonate. If you would like a look into your own personal situation, go ahead and send me an email. My email is in the description box below. I am currently running a 20% off deal on all mirror readings for the month of February. So if you would like to get an in, uh, some insight as to where you and your divine counterpart are on the journey, you can use that. If you would like to see what's going on with the divine masculine and divine feminine energies within you, you can do that. If you wanna use your mirror reading for anything else, it can be used for that, okay? Just make sure that you're trying to compare something because I do use two decks. Okay, um, I'm sure things have been pretty heavy for a lot of us, for a lot of you lately. Uh, we, we're getting a whole lot of shifts and energy waves coming through that are helping us ascend, helping our bodies rearrange, helping us purge. There's been a lot of um, ancestral purging going on, um, lack mentality purging, uh, health, disease purging going on within the collective mind. Um, we have expanded from the collective mind uh, awakening and now we're moving into the, well, I'm sorry, the cosmic mind awakening. Now we are extending into the cosmic heart awakening. There are a lot of people out there that can give you a lot of good information about that. I recommend Aluna Ash as always um, and Emily of Indigo Moons Healing. Both of them have been talking about, uh, well, Aluna Ash talks about a lot about the waves and everything that are coming through that are helping us ascend. Um, Emily of Indigo Moons Healing has been talking about the moving from the cosmic mind awakening to the cosmic heart awakening. I highly recommend that you check them out if you already haven't done so already. I also do wanna recommend one, um, someone that I just came across a few weeks ago, um, King Trident's Tribe. Trident being like, uh, um, you know, uh, what is it? Um, Neptune's trident or whatnot, you know, like that thing. Um, check him out. He is of the Divine, Divine Masculine uh, Collective and he's been putting out videos uh, on things about the Twin Flame journey from the Divine Masculine perspective. As you know, for many of you who have been following me for a while, I do like to get the perspective from other points of view, especially from the Divine Masculine point of view since many of us here on YouTube are of the Divine Feminine Collective. Check him out. He is fantastic. Um, a lot of the videos that he's been putting out, I've been listening to, and they've been really helpful in understanding. I mean, like, obviously, these are things that I kind of had an understanding of already, but to hear it confirmed from someone that is oriented within that point of view is really, really helpful, okay? Um, and I will, if I remember, I'll put his information in the description box below. Okay, so with all of that said, I think we're ready to go. So let's just get to it, yeah? Let me shift the camera here a little bit. All right, guys. So as I said, this is a general reading. Please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. You should be able to get a good, a, a little bit of information as to what might be going on with your counterpart in the physical world. But as always, please use this as an opportunity to connect with your own masculine and feminine energies. Yeah? All right. So 
let's let's just get straight to it guys hi spirit please make me a clear channel for the twin flame collective please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved please give us an accurate representation of the energies of the divine masculine represented by the deck on the left and of the energies within the divine feminine represented by the deck on the right and please show us how they are interacting with each other as individual pieces of a greater whole, also as divine twin flames. And please show us how they are potentially mirroring each other or actually are mirroring each other. Thank you so much, Spirit. Give me just a second here, guys. I want to turn on my lights in my room, see if we can get a little more. Yeah, that's better. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> so I'm going to start by shuffling the energies for the Divine Masculine Collective here. The Divine Masculine is still going through a whole lot of changes. Um, as I was doing a pre-shuffle before I started the video, just you know, connecting with the energies and getting settled and all that, um, <laughs> the divine masculine, well, the divine feminine, I started with the divine feminine deck first and a lot of flyers came out for that. For the divine masculine though, there was one and that card was death. Okay. There are many, many changes happening collectively when it comes to the divine masculine energies for some. And what I was picking up when that death card came out is for some of you, this is pretty tumultuous. It's pretty ugly. Um, and that's mainly because there's been a hell of a lot of resistance with, um, there's been a hell of a lot of resistance. I mean, you as a divine masculine energy or predominantly divine masculine energy, you've been probably quite resistant to change for quite a while. Even if the change that you have been, um, guided to make would really be of utmost benefit for you. Uh, masculine energies are fixed energies. So it is a little hard for change to come about for masculine energy, not to say that the feminine didn't resist change as well, but that's another topic. But um, yeah, so for some of you, it's pretty tumultuous. The change is pretty big. Um, uh, there could be a lot of drama. It's just, it, but that's mainly because of the resistance that may have been infused into the situation. Number one, from your own point of view, but also resistance um, generated from your interactions with the divine feminine or your divine feminine, however you, however that resonates with you, okay? All right, one more shuffle. One more shuffle for the divine masculine energies. Excellent. And then I will cut the deck. Boop. All right. Divine masculine energies, you are set. Now we're going to shuffle the divine feminine energies here. Divine feminine energies. So you're having a little bit of an easier time of it right now than the divine masculine energies, but that is mainly because you've gone through a lot of your major shifts already. Um, the divine feminine did kind of start and I put start in, um, in air quotes because Technically, that's just how we perceive it in um, 3D perception, in linear perception. It is perceived as the divine feminine rising first or going through their changes, challenges, and ascension first. But it's actually that both are going through it at the same time. Again, time. Time is an illusion. Um, both are happening simultaneously. Everything is happening all at once. It's just uh, how it's perceived here, okay? Because ultimately, at the core, divine feminine and divine masculine energies are two parts of the same whole. And the whole, and the whole, as in and of itself, is ascending and progressing. So there are things that are happening. Um, and it seems it has to, and, and the divine feminine energies are kind of the way showers. Okay. When it comes to the spiritual realm, again, it's all just perception, but, um, divine feminine, you're having a bit of an easier time of it right now, mainly because 
a lot of your ascension and adjustment major changes have already happened you've already gone through them a lot of us are feeling very tired right now masculine and feminine but that's because of all of the energetic waves that are coming through all the big shifts that are happening here um but with the flyers that came out for the divine feminine energies there's a lot of resistance the queen of swords in reverse came out first um then the king of wands with the four of pentacles then the emperor with the two of pentacles so some of you are in a very negative headspace when it comes to the masculine energies or your divine masculine who you perceive to be the divine masculine many of the in the divine feminine collective at least for those that i am channeling for right now um, are kind of fed up with masculine energy um, but that is only helping or hope only making it a little that much more difficult for you to heal your own inner masculine instead of focusing externally you have to be focusing internally and working with your own inner divine masculine that's really the only way that you're going well not the only way but it's go it's the best way that you're going to be able to influence those externally to you okay by working on your oh we got a flyer by working on your own internal energies and um, allowing that to shine out radiate out for the rest of the world to see okie dokie so um we have some flyers for the divine and feminine collective ten of pentacles here four of wands and the alchemist okay so um so the the and this is actually falling in line with what i was talking about with the flyers before so with this energy of for the divine feminine collective with this energy of being fed up or or um yeah being fed up with the masculine side of things or at least the divine masculine in the external realm um you know many of you are are focused on union but you're focused on union on the external and that's why you're dealing with this frustration and this this these energies of being fed up um, what you're needing to understand is the unconditional love aspect of it. So that's really what you're learning for most of you right now. You're learning to look at the circumstances and practice unconditional love, hold unconditional love, not just for yourself, but for everybody, everybody else around you. Now, union, yes, union is on your mind here with the four of wands. Um, but then also with the alchemist, you're working on... Uh, manifesting this it just feels it feels weird because it's like you want it and you're focused on manifesting it but at the same time you you're uh, many of you at least for what I'm picking up on right now many of you are coming from coming at this from a, a very very strongly egoic point of view kind of spiteful angry uh, queen of swords in reverse um, doing things to get back at someone, doing things to make yourself feel better. And in making yourself feel better, you feel like if you, if you stick it to the man, you could say, or, or go out and find someone else to prove to your divine masculine that you don't need him or some shit like that. That's from an egoic point of view. That is not unconditionally loving. That is circumstantial. That is, uh, feeding your ego in a negative sense instead of feeding your ego from a place of balance and wholeness um and so the ten of pentacles is here in reverse what you're what you may be going after actually in the long run is not really going to help you okay um it's some of you are, are really refusing to uh, uh, refusing to see things from another point of view see things from the other side um and so what also came out in the flyers before I started the video, uh, the King of Wands and the Four of Pentacles. The King of Wands is representing your ego um, and the Four of Pentacles. Some of you are really holding on to your egoic point of view of this and almost trying to get back at the divine masculine, whether it's your divine masculine or just masculine energies in general, trying to get back at the divine masculine by doing the same things that he or she or they have done to you over your lifetime this is not just since you've been on the on the in the consciously in the twin flame on the twin flame journey and i say consciously because we're always on it you know if you really chose to be here as a twin flame you've been here since you made that choice before you even manifested you know before you were even born so at the moment of your born at least at the time of your birth you can say you've been on this journey 
So, and so anything that you may be trying to get back at someone for doing to you while you've been on this journey is detrimental. It's really not helping you. I, um, I, I'm seeing this 10 of pentacles in reverse as you're kind of going in the, in kind of going in the wrong direction. And I say that lightly only because I say that for lack of a better term, I use the word wrong only because, um, there's no such thing as right or wrong, in my opinion. I see it that way now. Um, so you may be, quote, going in the wrong way, direction only because, um, it, it, I guess you could say it's taking you further away from union instead of aligning with truth, happiness, and healing, holding um, love unconditionally for everyone around you working towards union um, on a collective scale, not just for you specifically. <coughs> Excuse me, I hope that makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna continue now. I'm gonna do a, do a few more shuffles for the Divine Feminine Energies, and then we're gonna get started with the Divine Feminine. So before we even get there, I want everyone to really start thinking about, you know, looking at this reading from the point of view of what's going on internally. Okay, I'm gonna give this three more shuffles. We're going to start with the Divine Feminine Collective, but those of you that resonate more with the Divine Masculine, I encourage you to really look at this to get an understanding of what's going on within your own masculine and feminine energies within, okay? And then once we get to the masculine side, we're going to do the same. We're going to look at this from what's going on boop, with the masculine energies within, all right? Here we go. Overall energy for the Divine Feminine Collective. We, wow, we have the Emperor. And the Emperor came out in the Flyers section. The Emperor came out with the Two of Pentacles. So, the Emperor being the very first card in your reading, okay, as your overall energy from the feminine point of view, you are really dealing with balancing your own masculine energies, okay? You're dealing with taking your power back. And for a lot of you, um, you feel like taking your power back is in acting like the masculine may have putting forth some of that masculine the putting forth some of that um that ego that pride um that the masculine energies have exhibited up until now um and that's i i, I see that as for a lot of you it's necessary because you have to learn the lessons in that just like you know with the masculine energies that are now on their own rise in ascension they're having or have, they have been over the past month or so they have they a lot of them have been dealing with the energies um and deal and learning the lessons that they may have put you through in rejection and all that and so now for those in the divine feminine collective that are really working on or coming into integration with your masculine energies you're having to learn some of the lesson that the masculine learned before in ego pride um and all of that stuff uh, some of you may be playing the player role, you know, going out there and, you know, uh, interacting with, with a bunch of different people. And that's not wrong. It's just that when you're doing it from a place of just trying to please yourself, just trying to see, well, look, say like, see, I could do this too. I could be, a, you know, I could be a player just like you. You're only feeding into that programming, but <clears throat> it's not so bad because a lot of a lot of us do need to express that in order to learn from it so that you can come to a better terms and better balance within yourself and then work from there. But there is a bit of an, a rise of the masculine energy within. OK, and it's it's causing some confusion. I'm not going to lie. The Emperor. Yeah, look at that with the Page of Pentacles right underneath that. Yes. So the divine masculine energies within you are leveling up um, and coming into a new sense of being here. And it's so crazy. It's so interesting. If you look at this Emperor's throne, I've never really looked at it this, seen it this way. But if you look at the back of his throne right here, you see the back right there? It almost looks like butterfly wings. And I'm seeing a major transformation going on within your own inner masculine energies. And that's fantastic. Yeah, look at that. The five of swords. There is the expression of that twisted masculine energy we've all been talking about for so long. And underneath that, excellent, excellent, you have the Six of Swords. So a lot of you, yes, a lot of you are finding yourself, surprisingly even for some of you, you're finding yourself expressing this twisted masculine energy, this somewhat narcissistic, very extremely competitive, but competitive from a very negative point of view, one-upmanship. I'm hearing the phrase, anything you can do, I can do better, but this is not healthy competition. This is like, see, I told you I could do this and I could do this better than you, 
bitch. Now what? Now, whoa. Okay. That's not, that's not cool. It's not good because you're only helping to bring yourself down too. You're only helping to generate more negative, um, more dark, uh, a low, there it is, low vibrational energy, okay? But then here you go, you have the transition out of that, the six of swords. Some of you are seeing it for what it truly is and you're actively working to transmute it on behalf of the collective. Others of you are having to dive down into it and start playing the game, start expressing it. This is that 3D, three-dimensional programming um, matrix programming that we're all working towards getting out. Some of you are seeing it for what it is from a higher point of view and you're transmuting it. Some of you are having to, having to dive down into it so that you can, you can, um, experience it in order to get some sort of new perspective on it, almost like a hanged man situation. Others of us are choosing to go down into it in order to help with the transmutation. Regardless, we're moving forward. Six of swords. This is mental healing here. Absolutely. That's beautiful. And reassuring to be honest because that means that there's a you know there's there's a light at the end of the tunnel all right first set of surrounding energies from the divine feminine point of view you have the king of cups lots and lots and lots of masculine energy coming through for the divine feminine perspective but this is healing oh goodness sorry about the manicure guys this is um this is emotional maturity, okay? This is growing up. Some of the divine fem some in the divine feminine point of view are really going through some sort of emotional maturing. Absolutely. But this is helping if if this energy is tumultuous for you divine feminine, it's helping you come to terms with the divine masculine or I will just say the masculine point of view. All right. And I know that's something I struggled dealing with uh, as a kid. I always resonated more with the feminine side than the masculine side. And I and I um, I purposefully kept myself out of energy uh, situations in which I was dealing with this energy here because I didn't want to deal with the pain. I didn't vibe with it. It was it was icky to me, but that really didn't help. It wasn't until I started consciously working down this path and started really looking at things from both sides of the equation that I was like, oh, okay, now I understand it. Now I put it in, I can put it in persp into perspective and heal it, okay? That's beautiful. This is what's happening right now for a lot of us, or at least for those of us that I'm channeling for, all right? King of Cups is coupled with, yep, you see, justice. Justice is being served. Emotional maturity is being procured, is being cultivated, um, balance balance is happening that's beautiful and ultimately the more we all approach this the more that we all see the masculine and feminine within us and the more we work towards balancing out within ourselves that is that is more of an influence to the people around you than physically taking action in the physical world trying to preach or coach or, or you know um, guide people into it it's more about what you do internally because then that energy resonates around you it it it, it, it um expands it, it goes out into the world and it hits all the people places and circumstances that you come into contact with immediately and remotely and um that is what is the most that is the strongest catalyst towards the change internal work energetic work okay Second set of surrounding energies for the Divine Feminine Collective. We have the Nine of Wands. The struggle is real. But for some of you, you're starting to see the struggle that the masculine has to go through. I'm not saying that the feminine didn't struggle herself. I'm not saying that the feminine didn't necessarily know what it was. But for a lot of you, now you're getting, you're getting, an, you're ex experiencing it firsthand. And you can't really, I personally believe, you can't really come to an understanding of something unless you've been through it yourself. Okay, you can have an opinion of it. You can see what the other people around you that may have dealt with it have gone through and gained some sort of understanding from that point of view, but it's still an outsider's point of view. You have some, if you really want to understand something, if you really want to know something, you have to put yourself in the middle of it and experience it because that's really the only way you're going to get a full understanding of what it truly means because then the energy will be actively running through you. That's what I'm getting here with the Nine of Wands. There is a bit of surrender coming into play with the nine of wands here because it, it now instead of just fighting against the masculine because of in, in because of opinion now it's kind of like oh gosh 
oh shit, I really kind of see what you were going through now. I, I understand it from a completely div different point of view. And okay, I'm gonna, I made, I'm, some of you are saying that you're considering laying down your sword. That's beautiful. Nine of Wands is coupled with, holy shit, I told you, man. Look, the Ten of Swords, yeah. Oh, now I get it, yeah. Laying down the swords. Oh my God, that is so beautiful. Okay, so I, for those of you that are fairly new to the, to the Tarot, the Ten of Swords is the completion of the sword suit, the sword suit as the mental energies, the mind, um, the thoughts and the beliefs. The Ten of Swords is the end of a really rough, tumultuous, destructive, painful, backstabbing type situation, deceit, dishonesty, that kind of thing. Okay. So it's coming to an end. The completion is it's wrapping up basically and justice is being served here. Your challenge for the divine feminine perspective, you have the six of wands. Okay. Ego and pride. Yes. But um, the challenge here is, yeah, the challenge here is to let go of the ego and the pride and to bring it into balance. Now, also victory. What I'm getting with that as your challenge, you are looking for the victory. How do we all, how do we all become victorious through this situation? Hmm. Okay. Six of wands is coupled with the eight of swords. The, the, the biggest thing that I'm getting with this challenge here is the pride and the ego because the six of wands, yes, it is a victory, um, a symbol of victory. It's like you can go ahead and take that victory lap, but it's also about needing it. You could fall into the trap of um, too much pride, too much ego, and, um, ne and you really could need to come off your high horse is basically what that could say. And that's actually what this is saying here. All right. No one is better than the other. We are all equals, regardless of what the hierarchy might want to tell you. So the challenge here for a lot in the divine feminine collective is number one, believing that we all are divine. There are many divine feminines or people that resonate with the divine feminine collective that say, oh, how are you going to don't give your time to any of these non divine masculine men or women? It's like, well, wait a second. Whoa, whoa. Stop right there. Everyone is divine. Everyone has divine feminine and masculine energy within anyone who wants to expand, learn and grow and be a whole and more complete version of themselves than they were in the past can learn from and jump in on the twin flame journey. No one is better than the other. Okay. But that's also where a lot of this twisted masculine energy is being reassessed and understood from a different point of view. Okay. We are all equals. It's like you're truly coming into the powers of the emperor. Whereas a lot of you really have already started to work with the feminine and the empress. Now you're working to be not just the empress, but the emperor as well. The true version of the emperor. The emperor is a leader, is a protector, is a provider, um, and has respect and love and compassion for all of those that he serves, but he's just, he's just much more stern down to earth, grounded and rigid than say the feminine in the Empress, because the masculine in the emperor is very much 3d based and the earth can be a really tough place to live sometimes just because of its density currently. Okay. We're all shifting, but that's beautiful guys. That really is beautiful. Okay, your closing message or final outcome here for the Divine Feminine Perspective. We have, whoa, there's that Four of Pentacles again. And the Four of Pentacles came out with the, with the King of Wands here, all right, when I was doing the pre-shuffle. So did the Emperor, but the Emperor came out with the Two of Pentacles. Um, so the Four of Pentacles here, closing message, potential outcome, needing to leave some things behind. And, that, and the Spirit is saying ego and pride. <clears throat> okay, this is really a... Um, for some of you, it's a last ditch effort to purge a lot of the ego programming, the matrix ego programming. Okay. Four of pentacles is coupled with, wow, there's that two of pentacles. This also came out in the, in the flyers. 
in the big before I even started the video. You know, the biggest message that I'm getting here <clears throat> between the four of pentacles and the two of pentacles is your life is going to be so much easier once you stop juggling. And juggling in the sense of trying to be society's um, representation of what masculine and feminine is, um, trying to keep up appearance, trying to save face, trying to do things just to save your image. I mean, screw that. I understand, yeah, that's easier said than done. I mean, we all are human beings. We all, to a certain extent, do care about what others think of us. But at the same time, it's like if something that you've been doing in the past is is draining you, you're struggling to keep up with it, and you're just trying to make a transition, go ahead and make the transition. Forget what anyone has to say about it. If they really don't like where you're going, that's their problem. They don't have to stay in your life. You don't have to stay a part of theirs. Do what's right for you. Stop juggling and just let go of the things that no longer serve you, okay? Now, for some of you, the juggling act is because you are in the process of making that shift. The Two of Pentacles has been coming out a lot for the past few weeks, maybe even damn near, I'd say, the last month. That's because we're all making this major paradigm shift, having one foot in the past, one foot in the present. And so the final outcome here, or maybe the closing message for those that I'm, I'm channeling for, for the Divine Feminine Collective or perspective, is that... Um, you're in the process of letting a lot of things go. So you have a good amount of juggling that you may have to deal with at the moment. <clears throat> but ultimately, there's justice coming into play and emotional maturity coming into play as well. Okay? Alrighty. So now for the, 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 for the Divine Masculine perspective here, overall energy, we're starting you off. Now, please keep in mind, guys, those of you in the Divine Feminine Collective, I encourage you to please look at this as a way to understand what's going on within your Divine Masculine within, okay? Excellent. Here we go. We have the Eight of Pentacles for the Divine Masculine Collective. Work. Hard work. Hard work that's really paying off. For some of you, you're really, in, um, you're really focused on your career. You're focused on craftsmanship. Um, uh, what the energy that I'm getting with this at eight of pentacles is painstakingly conscious of how you're working, how you're building. Now, for some of you, that means that you're drowning yourself in work um, just to try and escape. Um, but finances, career is really a focus here. For a lot of us, this focus within finances and career is about changing the way you work. Instead of working... Instead of doing more work, you're doing you're instead of doing more work for the sake of, um, you know, the, the understanding that time is money, you're doing things or potentially doing things or working your way towards doing things with more efficiency. And that means taking more time to rest. OK, readjusting how you actively work in the world instead of working. Instead of working faster to, to get more done, you're working more efficiently to get things done better. Page of Pentacles, there we go. Or in these decks, this is the princess. But here is your mirroring, guys. There is really a level up happening and the collective is doing this together. We have the Nine of Pentacles, excellent. And under that, you have the sun. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Um, the, the masculine energies are really starting to radiate, really starting to vibrate and radiate and resonate on a whole level okay and this is <clears throat> from a much, much more authentic space I want to say many in the divine masculine collective are very much focused on being on their own being single if they do have somebody that they're messing around with it's really nothing serious if they're not trying to make it anything serious it's really just to pass the time and to be quite honest I really do feel like a lot of those energies um, are falling away. Number one, because the masculine is very much focused on finances and career and money and what they do, their physical representation in the world. Um, but also there is an energy of not wanting to waste time and energy with um, partners or whatnot that are just low in vibration, that are karmic, that are 
you know, just for fun because many of you are, are finding that that's just really draining and it doesn't really serve anything. You're probably losing your your passion or zest for that kind of thing just because it's not doesn't serve you in the way that it used to. And that's not a bad thing. It's actually a really good thing. The sun, I mean, I, I, I keep thinking when I look at the sun, there's, I keep seeing narcissism because that's what the sun can represent. But what I'm seeing here in terms of that, there's illumination happening around narcissistic tendencies. I'm just seeing the divine masculine energies radiating at such a high vibration, really allowing their light to shine for what it truly is. If you're not doing that just yet, you're getting into that energy. You're finally starting to allow your mind to wrap itself around that concept and integrate it for yourself and allowing it to manifest into your life, okay? And that's probably why you're staying in this independent state with the Nine of Pentacles. So for some divine feminines out there, splitting it up and looking into the external ex, external versions, for some divine feminines out there, if you're wondering why you may not have heard from your divine masculine in a while, um, mainly because you like things had been working on a sense or progressing in a sense that the relationship is becoming better between the two of you and you're starting to communicate more or on better terms than you have in the past and you're still wondering why you're not really hearing much from them, this is why because they're working on themselves right now. They're allowing their light to radiate and shine because they actively have this new uh, level to acclimate to. The Page of Pentacles keeps coming out all the time and I do see that as a physical level up, all right? Getting into the first set of surrounding energies for the Divine Masculine perspective, you have, wow, the King of Wands. And the King of Wands came out as a flyer for the Divine Feminine before I started the reading. Uh, the video even, um, King of Wands, confidence, uh, sure of himself, knowing what he wants, knowing what he's going after. I really don't see that much movement happening right now. The King of Wands can talk about restraint because very much like the strength card does, um, because the King of Wands knows what he wants and knows and has no problem taking action, but also knows when to fall back, hold back and bide his time. It knows when the right time to strike is. This is more energy of the sun also as the king of wands. I really feel like a lot in the divine masculine, from the, from the divine masculine perspective, the divine masculine energies are really influencing a lot of, uh, just about everybody to show up, grow up and be more authentic. Be a truer version of yourself than you were in the past. Let go of the ego, the blame. Okay. King of wands is coupled with, wow. The devil. Ooh. Ooh. Honestly, may, I, I'm, I'm not... I, at first, you can look at this and say this is a bad thing and saying that the, those in the divine mask... From the divine masculine perspective, things are still very much about narcissism, about um, addiction, codependency, and stuff like that. But that's not what I'm seeing here because I'm. we have the sun underneath the deck for the ma masculine perspective. I was seeing the King of Wands energy as more as an extension of that sun energy and the sun was, was speaking to illumination. And here what I'm seeing is the divine masculine energies are really shining, starting to shine a light on the toxic, narcissistic, codependent, um, addictive, circumstances, habits, um, cycles that have been going on that have basically been plaguing not just the, ma well, the masculine, yes, but not just the masculine, the feminine as well. But the masculine is really in an energy of rising up right now, of ascending, of growing up and showing up. So there's a lot of illumination happening here, okay? And that actually absolutely resonates with the divine feminine side in dealing with this, five of swords, with the emperor, okay? We were just talking about that. All right. Second set of surrounding energies from the masculine perspective, you have the wheel of fortune. Look at that. Karmic cycles are changing. Healing is happening here, says spirit. Okay, that is right. You're finding that right underneath the 10 of swords for the divine feminine. So 10-10, completion. The divine feminine has risen and now it's actively pulling the divine masculine energies up with it. 
and I, even in saying has risen, it doesn't mean that it's done rising. No, it's just a threshold has been crossed, says spirit. And so now it's allowing the two to meet together in the middle, meeting at the center for it to just continue from there. Okay. The wheel of fortune for the divine masculine perspective is coupled with, wow, more mirroring the nine of wands. Look at that, you guys. So yeah, this completion is very much, you look, divine, divine masculine and divine feminine are very much mirroring each other right now. I mean, shit, y'all, look at that. The nine of wands with the 10 of swords for the divine feminine, the wheel of fortune, which is a number 10, and the nine of wands for the divine masculine. That's really beautiful, you guys. You know, the, 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 the energies are really starting to work together here to complete the circle, complete the cycle, to end the, the toxicity, the, narciss the narcissism and all that stuff. That, wow, that is so cool. Okay, the challenge <clears throat> from the Divine Masculine perspective, we have the Ace of Swords, the truth, honesty, authenticity, Auth I'm sorry, authenticity. <laughs> you mean a combination between in uh, integrity and authenticity. There we go. But yeah, authenticity. There it is right there. Authenticity. <laughs> I love it. But okay, the challenge for the divine masculine from the divine masculine per perspective is to see the truth, to see things for what they really are, and then to do something about it. And in that, I mean, be honest, forthright, embody the truth, be a living breathing version embodiment representation of the truth <laughs> that's beautiful ace of swords in the challenge is coupled with more mirroring the four of pentacles see now when you see the truth when you're honest with yourself then it's like oh shit okay well i know this now i can never go back so i guess i should start releasing things this is being this is having the the guts the balls, the cojones to look at what you've been holding on to for dear life, for fear of change and start releasing it. Start to see the truth in the toxicity of what you've been holding on to and releasing it. That's beautiful. Closing message for the divine masculine perspective or potential outcome here you have, excellent, the magician. And this really is a masculine energy, the magician. The magician, takes action, does things to manifest, works with the powers at this, this at the elemental powers at your disposal, earth, air, fire, water, to create what it is you want. The doing in the manifestation aspect, okay? So you're definitely creating, definitely creating a new point of view, a new reality, a new representation, a representation of yourself. That's gorgeous. The magician is coupled with Oh, wow, the Queen of Cups. So really what's happening here from the masculine point of view, it, oh my God, look, 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 look. Oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll get there in a second. But what you're creating is from a more compassionate, open-hearted and loving position. Queen of Pentacles, Un the Queen of, I'm sorry, not the Queen of Pentacles, the Queen of Cups. The Queen of Cups is the embodiment of unconditional love. And so you have the balance between masculine and feminine here. The masculine in the magician in taking action, the feminine in the, um, the queen of cu cups in bringing forward the compassion, the love, the acceptance, the emotion, the nurturance to allow your manifestation to flourish. This is the balance between masculine and feminine here. Look at this. I'm so freaking excited. This is such an excellent reading because look at what we have in the divine feminine point of view. The first set of surrounding energies for the divine feminine is the king of cups, the counterpart here to this queen of cups with justice, which is a feminine figure. The balance between masculine and feminine. The feminine figure is in justice. The masculine figure is in the king of cups. And then we get to the very end of the divine masculine point of view. And you've got the counterpart here in the queen of cups and the masculine figure in the magician. That is so freaking cool. Can't make this stuff up, you guys. Wow. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I'm loving this reading right now. We're going to move forward. We're going to get into the Oracle Guidance section now. So I'm going to go into the Relationship Spread 
from the animal spirits. And then I'm going to close the reading with one card from the light worker or, oh, 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 yes. Oh yes. You guys, we have a flyer and the flyer so far is wolf. And this is absolutely the energy. And I, I should have said it when I was, when I was channeling for the divine masculine or for the emperor, but the emperor card, when I was talking about the emperor card for the divine feminine, which is the very first card in the overall energy for the divine feminine perspective, I was feeling energies of the wolf. Like I was seeing that energy in my mind, but I didn't say anything about it. Um, but now it's coming out here. Okay. So good. We're going to leave that right there. And I'm going to continue. That's going to be a central message. And I'm going to still going to pull the energies for the spread. Okay. One more shuffle. Okay. So for the divine masculine here. For the Divine Masculine, we have Zebra. Excellent. For the Divine Feminine, oh, Swan. That's beautiful. For the Shadow Dynamic of the Relationship, ooh, we have two. We have Camel and we have Phoenix. Good Lord. And for the Illuminated Dynamic, we have two. We have Butterfly and cheetah. Wow. Okay. This is going to be a little bit of a longer section here, but we'll get through it. For the masculine side, we have zebra. Oopsie. There it is. Zebra, eccentric, creative, visionary. Zebras are the most precious of gems. They are young at heart, well-cultured, and have an undying curiosity about life. Being in the company of a zebra personality not only is a delight, but also opens our minds. Be prepared. Their potent magic is contagious, and you may soon find yourself in a faraway land, expanding your worldview while having a blast. Zebras also like to contribute to the global health through environmental or volunteer work. This card may be a hint to pack your bags. When in balance, zebra is worldly, enthusiastic, and fashion forward. When out of balance, zebra is jaded, pouty, and vain. To bring into balance, one must have an epic adventure or produce some art, view some art, go to an art gallery or something. I don't know. <laughs> For the feminine, we have swan. Effortless creativity, sensitive mystic, elegant power. The swan represents heightened creativity. In Hindu mythology, the goddess, Sar goddess Saravati, with uh, the embodiment of language, creativity, and artistry, rides on the back of this graceful creature. The swan is ready to take us there to the fluid realm of writing, creating, and reflecting. This potent and healing energy is not to be taken for granted or taken lightly. When the swan card appears, your soul is calling for attention, for solo time. An inner voice is waiting to be heard, an inner vision likely to be revealed. When in balance, Swan is in, has infinite creative power. When out of balance, Swan is agitated, snippy, and lacking in vision. To bring into balance, one needs solo time or just some writing. Creativity is the name of the game here for both the masculine and the feminine. For the shadow dynamic, we have Camel and we have Phoenix. Uh, fire. There we go, Camel. Lots of fire here, guys. Camel, resourceful, independent, knows oneself. The camel can handle absolutely anything as it carries a wealth of nourishment within. This wondrous creature is self-reliant and handles challenge with ease. Even in the face of excess heat, judgment, or anger, the camel searches inside for the cool elixir of water to calm the situation. The camel represents the ultimate form of bringing opposites into balance, fire and water, and being responsible for one's own reactions. The camel is a wonderful traveler, and is especially fond of trips to faraway lands. When in balance, camel is calm, content, and has a sparkle in the eye. When out of balance, camel is dehydrated and lacks vitality. Bring into balance, one must go on a pilgrimage. And next we have Phoenix, one of my absolute favorite cards in the whole deck, Phoenix. 
freedom from suffering and past karma, reincarnation. The phoenix represents the transformation of our past. It doesn't mean running from it, denying it, or burning bridges with rage. The phoenix employs an advanced technique described in yoga as the burning of impurities through practice and dedication. The essence of the phoenix is with us when we realize we have been suffering too long and something must change. We take a stand and decide to live consciously instead of being driven by the unconscious mind and its long list of fears and aversions. At that very moment, the spark of the phoenix is lit and the great bird helps us burn through our baggage. We no longer need to run from who we are, what has happened to us, or what we have done. The, quote, stuckness and, quote, dead weight fall into the ashes and a lightness and clarity emerge. As the stagnancy continues to smolder, the phoenix lifts our spirits up and up and we begin to recognize ourselves again. We may catch a glimmer in our eye that wasn't there before. Look closely. It's a sign the, fear, the fire of transformation is upon your wings. Okay, so for the illuminated dynamic now, we have cheetah and we have butterfly. So since we're, air is closer, we're going to start with butterfly and then we're going to move to cheetah. And then we're going to get this closing message from the animals in the wolf, which is speaking to the energies of the masculine rising, the energies of the emperor here that I was talking about with the Divine Feminine earlier, okay? All right, so butterfly for the illuminated dynamic, undergoing great change and transformation. The energy of the butterfly is with us during periods of transition. Since air is the element of the heart, this change usually involves relationships, or if you love your job, perhaps your career. Since transition is accompanied by some amount of discomfort, be extra patient and kind during this time, especially if the butterfly is you. Let solid friends and activities support you like a, quote, cocoon. Committing to one daily routine, a meal, practice, or prayer, done at the same time, place, and time, excuse me, will do wonders for lifting a butterfly's spirit. When in balance, butterfly is graceful and cheerful. When out of balance, butterfly is fragile and frustrated. To bring into balance, one must practice a daily routine. And finally, for the illuminated dynamic, we have cheetah which is a representation of the sun energy here. Cheetah, solar force, action, achievement, masculine energy. The cheetah is the epitome of the solar forces at work. The sun doesn't shine onto the cheetah. It shines from inside this great creature and expands outward to brighten the universe. The energy within a cheetah personality is palpable to others and they naturally attract an audience to bear witness to their remarkable achievements. Purpose and passion are the best fuel for a cheetah's forward momentum. So if you're lacking in those areas, reconnect to the why before you start running. When in balance, cheetah achieves anything and has boundless energy. When out of balance, cheetah is impatient and competitive. To bring it to balance, one must reconnect to purpose. And then finally, the closing message here uh, from on, in terms of the divine masculine energy that is definitely on the rise right now, we have wolf. And this is a collective. This is for both sides of the equation, okay? But this is speaking specifically to what is happening within the divine masculine at the moment. Guardian of family and tribe. Activision. Ritual. The wolf's mission is to help uphold the well-being and longevity of the pack. Healthy wolf energy expresses itself through activism, mentorship, humanitarian efforts, or teaching, religious or political studies. The wolf gets into trouble when it assumes every member of the tribe must follow suit. This includes children walking in their parents' footsteps. Although it will surely be uncomfortable at first, practicing tolerance helps balance out agitated wolf energy. Contemplate the following, embrace all, exclude none. When in balance, Wolf is reliable, democratic, and fearless. When out of balance, Wolf is judgmental and dominating. To bring into practice, uh, to bring into balance, one must practice letting go. Now, what this was, what I, what made me think of this Wolf energy while I was talking about the emperor, the ener energies, excuse me, of the emperor. I was speaking about the emperor from a balanced point of view. Okay, the caregiver, the care, the the, the provider, the the leader. Okay, the one that brings structure into the world. This is, when, when balanced, um, the emperor understands that each and every person within the tribe, within the pack, whatever, is an individual. 
And no one has to be the same as the other. No one is the same as the other. But it's about finding a balanced and harmonious way that everybody can get along, everybody can thrive and survive and strive together. <coughs> Excuse me. That is what a true emperor does. An emperor, a true emperor that is balanced and whole and healthy does not seek to control people for their own reasons, does not seek to control and manipulate others. All that the real, a true emperor seeks to do is keep order, make sure that everybody is safe, make sure that everybody is getting what they need, make sure that everybody is doing what they love and is happy and fulfilled, okay? In their own way, not the way that the emperor sees fit, not the way that the emperor wants. That is when the emperor is reversed, when someone is uh, narcissistic and trying to control you um, for their own gain, as in the emperor's own gain. But here, when the emperor is balanced and whole and healthy, the emperor is controlling the situation, yes, but it's for the gain of not only the emperor, but the collective, the gain of the individual. And, they do, and the emperor controls through bringing structure into one's life to help someone thrive, to help the group thrive. Wow, so there you have it, okay? Now, I'm gonna close the reading with one card from the Lightworker Oracle. All right, everyone, here we go. Closing message, please, Spirit, for the Divine Feminine and Masculine, the Divine Twin Flame Collective. Closing message, please, from the Lightworker Oracle for this week's reading. There we go. Card number 24, Initiation by Air. Excuse me. You have a strong and powerful mind. The mind can be a great asset. Did this card come out last week? Potentially. It can bring, I, I remember it did come out recently. Okay. It can bring comfort, peace, and strength as you take your spiritual journey. It can also be a dark and destructive force, undermining your power, making you doubt your own heart, and keeping you trapped in fear. The mind, developed without a loving spiritual practice, can be a frightening weapon rather than a liberating sword. How will you choose to use your mind power? Mm. So I can definitely see the, the, the correlation there, especially within the Divine Feminine Collective. So for those of you that are actively dealing with the twisted masculine energies right now, whether you are seeing it within yourselves, whether you've dived, dove into it and you're expressing it yourself, whatever, it's all about the mind. It's all about the ego. It's about the thoughts. Okay. And so we've all been learning this lesson a lot lately, but this, and the, obviously we're still going through this type of energy because I do remember this card came out maybe last week or the week before or something, a few weeks ago, something like that. Okay. Okay. So there you have it guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have a great week. I hope you had a beautiful weekend and I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Uh, I will see you tomorrow, Monday, for our morning coffee. Also, keep in mind that if you'd like to get a personal reading with me, I do have mirror readings for 20% off right now. And that's going through the month of February. So go ahead and send me an email and we'll get you all set up. Yeah? Much love to you guys and I look forward to connecting with you again very, very soon. Yeah? Bye. Bye. Ooh, there's a hole in my shirt. <laughs>